Welcome everybody, my name is Rainer, this is Rainer Books, I'm a German booktuber living in Sweden. And tonight, for the 26th time in my segment, I've read something, I want to present you a single book. And this is a book called Mayflies by Andrew O'Hagan. Mayflies by Andrew O'Hagan was published, I think... Mayflies is a book about male friendship. It explores, once again, the beauty of coming of age, the beauty it, it can that can be revealed when coming of age, that can come up. And uh, the world, when the world seems like an open space and when you sometimes have the feeling of being invincible and even immortal. But it's also a book that deals with the inevitability of loss, with the inevitability of death. Just like the great British actor Anthony Hopkins once said, no one of us is going to make it alive out of here. And... Um, I think it's time to start the review. I have to admit that I have to admit that Andrew Hagen is a new name to me. I didn't know the author before. He um and actually, when I read now about him and I googled a little bit about him, did some research about him, I understood that I should have known him before. He's a very established author. He is probably one of the most important contemporary authors in Scotland's literature and in the literature of the United Kingdom. Andrew O'Hagan was born in Glasgow in Scotland in 1968. Uh, he's currently a visiting professor at King's College London. And he is also the editor in chief, or in large, as they say in England, at the London Review of Books. Six novels and three non fiction books stand to his name, and even lots of articles and essays in very renowned international magazines. Already for his very first novel, uh, in, published in 1999, called Our Fathers. Andrew O'Hagan was shortlisted for the Booker Prize, and he was also shortlisted for the International Literary Award in Dublin, the International Dublin Literary Award. Our Fathers um, is a book where uh, the character James Bain, Bond, James Bond tells the story of his dying grandfather, Hugh Bond, a socialist who more or less led uh, Scotland's housing program after the Second World War. A tale of dark hearts and modern houses, and of three men of three generations in the same family searching for utopia. In 2006, O'Hagan published his third novel, Be Near Me, and again he got nominated for the Booker Prize, this time on the long list. And this is a novel about f religious life in a faithless age. Four years later, O'Hagan surprised the audience with his book, with his novel, The Life and Opinions of Math the Dark and of his friend Marilyn Monroe. This is a novel about the life and the philosophical observations of Mafia Honey, which was a dog that Frank Sinatra gifted to Marilyn Monroe. But O'Hagan has also a history of a lot of non-fiction publications, as I said before. His autobiographical reportage social history book, The Missing, 2004, about modern Britain was celebrated. Hagen has also written the unauthorized autobiography of Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks that the United States still want to get a hold on. Um, he was the ghostwriter for this book that was, uh, tw I think 26 publishing companies was were interested of having this autobiography by Assange. Assange uh, gave a lot of interviews. The book was written, uh, but it was unauthorized because um, Assange sort of cancelled the contract with the publisher, but the publisher could publish the book as Julian Assange, the unauthorized autobiography, and Andrew O'Hagan is the one who wrote this. He also wrote a lot of essays, as I said before, and one that I'm very, looking, very much looking forward to read very soon is... Thank you for this beautiful motor. So lovely. Um, oh, yeah, power. Uh, the one that I'm very much looking forward is um, uh, the essay that he wrote a couple of years ago about the fire at Grenfell Tower in London, in North, I think that's North Kensington, London. Uh, 60,000 words essay. 
he is uh, a very well-renowned author and his book uh, Mayflies appeared at Faber and Faber in 2020. It is, uh, the author has said that uh, this book is autobiographical in a way. It's dedicated to Keith and Joy Martin and uh, this is a book about uh, O'Hagan's friend Keith Martin, more or less, and the friendship to him. But it's a novel, so uh, there are things that are different. It's a story of the 1980s and five, six friends in the first part of the book. The book consists of two parts, two big parts. The first part is 1986, the summer of 1986, uh, five or six young boys from uh, the vicinity of Glasgow in Scotland uh, plan to go to Manchester in the summer in England to go to a big festival where, among other bands, the fall are going to play Joy Division. Uh, no, New Order is going to play and the Smiths are going to play there. So that's the big plan and the I narrator is a guy called James or Jimmy and his best friend is Tully Dawson. Tully Dawson is Keith Martin probably and Keith Tully Dawson is sort of the center of the attention of this group, the good heart, the spirit of that group. He has a very complicated relationship to his father who is a working class man growing up in Glasgow, having become an alcoholist, and he dies pretty early and leaves the family alone. It's also a novel about uh, Margaret Thatcher's United Kingdom and the heartlessness that came into the whole uh, politics of the UK when many, many people had huge problems to survive. So these boys go to Manchester and uh, they're waiting for the Smiths to play in the former railway station of Manchester. And then the Smiths came on. Aubrey Beardsley in white jeans, Morrissey in his prime. The singer waved it into view and sold his drowsy r reticence like a drug. The band was at its height, romantic and wronged and fierce and sublime, with haircuts like agendas. Morrissey came brandishing a license, a whole manner of permission, as if a new kind of belonging could be made from feeling left out, like nobody knew you as he did. Time takes nothing away from it, those thousands of hardened teenagers taking the roof off and giving out a gawky frontman from Stratford. Tully found me and pushed me down to the stage. Over the speakers the sound was scratchy, but every word and every guitar lick felt like a statement only they could make, and only we could hear, those songs rolling from the stage to irrigate our lives. That's what it's all about, Tully shouted, and he kissed my cheek as we sang. So beautiful. But all beauty must fade. And um, a couple of pages later, a couple of 30, 40 pages later, the second part of the book starts. And this is like 30 years later in 2016. And Jimmy is no longer living in Scotland. He has moved to London. He's working as a writer in London. Tully is still in Scotland. He's a teacher of English. He's still playing in a band, and he's still dreaming about the revolution. But Tully uh, sends a text message to um, to Jimmy, and he writes, "Can we talk?" Jimmy's on some kind of reception or something, so he he, he says, "I'm going to call you in a couple of minutes," and then they speak to each other on the phone for first time in a couple of years, and Tully tells Jimmy that things got really really bad for him now he is going to die he has um, got to know that he has terminal cancer and that he has only a couple of months to live and he wants to meet Tully he wants to help he wants to have Tully around him to help him to die uh, in Switzerland where it is allowed to um, to die by assistance it's the only country in Europe where uh, terminal ill people can get help when they want to die, when they want to finish their lives. And Tully wants Jimmy's help. Um, Tully's, Tully's girlfriend, Anna, is hardly against this. And the story carries on, and now it's suddenly about the inevitability of loss, the problems of life and death that people are confronted with in their early 50s when, when Tully suddenly is terminal ill. And what friendship 
is like and I see that the battery now is going to vanish. So uh, the second part of the book is uh, the sad part of the book. The first part is the very joyous part and the second part is the sad part but it's a bittersweet part because it sort of reflects about friendship, about love even because um, Tully is getting married with Anna, his girlfriend, and she already knows on uh, the wedding day that she's going to be a widow very soon. And both parts of the book, the two parts, have um, a trip, a significant trip. The first part has the trip to Manchester, where six boys from Glasgow travel to Manchester. The second part has that trip from Glasgow uh, slash London to Zurich in Switzerland where they travel to uh, end um, Tully's life in a dignified way. And in the very end, when Tully is drinking the first cocktail that sedates, doesn't sedate him, but makes him sort of tranquilizes him a little bit, makes him more peaceful, and then the second uh, cocktail is going to, to kill him, um, they see a football. Tully sees a football pitch outside that room where they are in, and, and he he wants to have five minutes on that football pitch for himself. And with, because this is not a spoiler, because everybody knows when you pick up this book that what it's about. This is about uh, a friendship that ends, like everything ends with death. So um, along the windowsill, that's the last paragraph. There were votive candles, and we could see a football pitch outside. It had white goalposts, a ball sitting on the grass, and a small lily pond in front of the house. He asked if he could go out to the playing field, just for five minutes by himself. But when he reached the door, he held out his hand for Anna. From the window, we watched them walking the touchline, and the sun was hazy, and the pond was perfectly still. He stood for a moment, looking back. Then he hugged his wife and blew us a kiss before running onto the field with his arms outstretched. He stormed towards the goal and booted the ball and when he turned around, the champion's smile was on his face again. Mayflies by Andrew O'Hagan, a beautiful book about a friendship that I would very much advise you to read. I want to read more of Andrew O'Hagan after I read Mayflies because he seems to be a chronicler. How do you say that? Um, he seems to be chronicling the times of Scotland and the history of Scotland during the period that he lives. And that is something that I really love about literature when people are able to sort of speak and become a voice of their time. Mayflies by Andrew O'Hagan. It's not if for you if you have problems in reading about this because this is really a tough read. It's it's a very good read, uh, but it's a tough read. So that was everything for today. It's not dark yet. That's the book I'm reading now by Peter Robinson, which is well, quite a quote right now, right? So I wish you a beautiful evening and hope to see you again soon, probably on Sunday with another video of uh, with another weekly wrap up and there's more things to come on this channel i can promise you bye bye